Hey guys, it's Nate. I'm back with a, another conversion I did. Um, I think it turned out pretty great and it didn't really use any parts that you don't already have. So, uh, uh, real quick, this is the Devilfish. Um, I really like the model, but um, if you look at the original model, it's pretty bulky in the back and it doesn't look flight worthy in my opinion. Uh, so, real quick, I will show you a picture of what the original one looks like. Now that you're back, you can see it kind of has a bulkiness to the back. It doesn't look flight worthy. I, it doesn't look bad at all. I like the model, but I thought I might as well do this. It was pretty easy. So um, everything right now is uh, it's missing quite a bit of pieces because um, I'm going to paint them separately. So real quick, just so you know what is going to eventually be on there. The landing gear. Uh, these are the doors for the side. Um, the turret for the front. Uh, this little guy that goes in here, and uh, this is the thing that holds the turret onto the bottom, and then the back door, which goes to the back. All right, so now that I show you what is going to be eventually on it, and I also actually noticed these guys. I took um, these are separate too because it's going to be a ton easier to paint these separately and then shove them in there. Um, so real quick, this is how I did the conversion as quickly as I can do. So my videos get a little bit long. Um, on the original model, which I'll cut back to, and if you saw that, you saw that um, what they have is these little pieces right here, and they, they are part of the side, and then what happens is you connect the engine to it, and it rotates. Well, all I did is I cut these off, and so that you can see what I cut off right here. Um, and what I did is I got just a serrated knife out of my kitchen. Uh, a, a, an actual saw for it will work better, but I didn't want to buy one. And then you just lay it against this surface right here and saw, 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 saw it all off. And then there'll be a big hole right here. Uh, the big hole I covered up with some uh, extra things I had. My friend had some bits. He had six of them, which was great because I made three of these. But honestly, all you need here is something flat to cover the big hole you just made. Uh, any bit will work. doesn't matter. Um, other than this bit right here, everything comes with it. All I did is uh, assemble these uh, engines separate, and then instead of them being here, I angled them and glued them uh, just to this angle right here. I made no, uh, I don't, I don't like. I want to change the model as little as possible and do conversion because it's a lot easier to glue that way. You can see there's the angled part right here. Now that that nub's out of the way, you can just lay it flush. So what I did was. And get this to show up pretty well. The way I lined it up was is there is a uh, crease right here where it goes. You go, oh goodness, this is hard to do in the camera. That way and then that way. So there's a, cre uh, a point right here. That's what I lined up the side of this with. And then every single one I lined up the end of this little part where it turns into an engine to the side. And it was just glue is on there, uh, just a ton of glue. And that was it. So you cut these off you get the engines, you glue them on the same side they'd normally be, but like that, and then glue them in. Make sure to line up all your models the same, and then right here, cover it up with something flat. Or green stuff it if you really want. Um, you can tell I have green stuff all over this, and that's just because I like to use liquid green stuff and then sand it. It gives you a really smooth finish when you paint it. Uh, for your car aficionados, it's basically Bondo. <laughs> so. Um, that's pretty much for that, and I'll show you how many of these I've done so far. So, I've done three ones, three of them. And what's great about the, uh, whoops, what's great about doing a conversion where you don't actually do a lot of changes to the chassis, they will line up the same. So all these engines are the exact same angle. It's pretty great. Um, at this point, now the, um, uh, because we're using the original angles of the model, these will always be on the same angle, the same distance back, as long as you line them up with the crease and stuff. Uh, personally, this is all I'm ever going to do <clears throat> to a model because I don't want to change the uh, footprint of it because that will affect the way it plays in the game. If you were to cut these off, say, it would look cool, but if you got your drones back here, that is going to drastically affect the way that the model plays. And I don't, I don't like that. I don't want. This is for a campaign I'm in right now, a narrative campaign, and. Uh, the engine being moved from here to here really doesn't change the profile that much. It would be like here. So it's going to be easier to hit. It's modeling for disadvantage because you'll be able to, it's much wider, or a little bit wider, and a little bit 
less high. So I think it's about the same. You can hit it easier, catch the sides easier on it, definitely. But I think it looks a lot better. I'll stop rambling, and um, I will see you in the next video once I get all this magnetized and primed, and then we can start on painting them. Alright, I'll see you next time, guys.